Hello and welcome to Monday Club. I'm never allowed to say that on the podcast because as Sam says, I'm too northern, too boring, and he's got more interesting people to introduce the show to the audience. Um, Obviously, this is Mark. I'm taking over the Monday Club channel because they have got a new sponsor, and that is Hypervolt. But there are also some key benefits of Hypervolt I want to speak about right at the outset. And one of those is something that is going to revolutionise stuff for us as installers, and that is fronting the grant payment back to us at the point the work's completed. And that is an incredible thing. I think that is, is brilliant to help us as installers and it shows Hypervolt aren't just focused on selling stuff to actual end users, they're looking after the installer network as well, which is absolutely mega. Hello and welcome. Monday Club, back again. So today, we've got Bundo in the house. Yo. Um, and we've also got Liam from Komodo Workwear, who just happens to be a spark and sells um, sells some quite snazzy gear, actually. But we're, we're I'm, I'm going to do I'm going to do some blocking. Up. I I I've heard of you, but I can't say I've seen the stuff. So I'll have a look right now. Yeah, I tried well, to. Yeah, I tried fun. to. When Sam said that you were coming on, I was like, "Oh, I looked," and for some reason, I didn't. It wasn't Komodo. I was thinking, Sam. You know, I said to you, I can't spell it. I thought it was Chameleon when you said it to me <laughs> on the phone. I know. So I've been looking up Chameleon flavors. Like, nope, can't find any of it unless you sell women's swimwear. <laughs> then that's not you. Maybe uh, one day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. Maybe one day I'd sell that. Um, Maybe. So, um, yeah, so Liam, you're also a spark as well, mate. So, yeah, let's find out a little bit about you. Yeah, so I uh, obviously done an apprenticeship like most of most of the sparks nowadays. Um, completed that about five years or so ago. So I've been on the on the tools about nine years now in total. Where, where about you from? I'm from Hornchurch. Oh, in, uh, like oh. near Romford in Essex. I suppose someone has to be, didn't they? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, what about you two? Where about you two from? I'm Stafford, from... Midlands. I was yeah. up there today. I started a new job um, in uh, Northampton. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it was just by Milton Keynes. It's a, it's a legal growth like factory. It's going to be a warehouse for like just like loads of different growing loads of different things basically and um there's a few of them they're massive just putting a few temporary lights around the sides a few floods and that is that what you do you do you do mostly temporaries or no do you know it's funny enough um i actually done an apprenticeship uh with a firm that was mainly temps and yeah. pretty much learned all most of what i knew sort of through temps and then i didn't really obviously come to the end it's, it's not really the best game to be learning in um, and I was always sort of took pride in sort of how neat my work was. So sort of come into the permanent game after my apprenticeship, which done me a favour because it sort of made me in- enjoy it a little bit more. Um, just putting up nice work and a job satisfaction, doing, like armors and transformers and that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, man, I, I done I done quite a bit of temporaries over at Battersea Power Station. Yeah, there was a that was a big one, man. And uh, I quite enjoyed it because it was easy, but it's um, all about it's a the bit easy slapdash, Three or four it? years of it, it gets too much, though, man. Yeah, it's a bit slapdash. Yeah, like can be. yeah. But um, so what did you get up to this week? So you've been working on a grow farm. Yeah, growing weeds. A little tiny little laboratory where they're all like tiny little stems, um, and then obviously we're going to work and move them all into the into the warehouse. Um, I think there, there's just loads. It's just like, you know, one of them fields that have just got loads and loads of solar panels on. And it's just one of them complexes where it's just going to be a few warehouses. And uh, it's just going to be a big site. But it's just a fair old slap for me. Wouldn't mind being a little bit closer to the middle of the country. How long does that take you to get there from Hornchurch? I mean, this morning it took me a good two hours. Yeah. People are just waiting that for fuel at the moment. <laughs> yeah, mate, don't, don't. No, I think it might be one of them ones where we'll get the old, um, get a little B and B or a little hotel down there just for yeah. like smash it. I do like twelve hour days or whatever. So, what are they growing then? Are they any anything or is it? I don't actually like... know. I don't actually know. I mean, I've been told that like there's a few different things, but you know, I can't believe everything you hear on site. Yeah, <laughs> mate. I tell you what, I've um. 
I've been working at Maidstone Hospital. Okay. Um, just being awesome, basically. And I've been so awesome, I've been um, invited to um, an interview to oh, work yeah. for the firm. That's how good I am. They obviously haven't watched any of these, have they? Oh. No, they obviously haven't, and I hope they never do. <laughs> but yeah, I'm basically that good. Um, like people were like, "Boy, like we'd like you to work for us." I'm like, "Well, don't come cheap." And so, <laughs> come cheap. Just say to me if you want me to walk around with a clipboard and do nothing. <laughs> Absolutely, I'll oh, give me a job and the that's phone. What I'm good at. Yeah, and the phone. phone, a high vis, and a clean helmet. Helmet, hard hat. Would be sound. Yeah, I would be, mate. I would be. And it is for a um, site manager role. So maybe, let's see, maybe uh, Fat Sam Electrical will be evolving into Fat Sam Site Manager. <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh, Could you, you imagine? imagine? Some of the guys that are like, listen to this or watch this and get a new job and they walk around, they just see Sam walking past with his little notepad going, oh, hi, guys. Do you want to come on podcast later? <laughs> That's what it'd be. Uh, Kimmy's not the man for the phone. Distributing people. little cards on the site and say, listen, tune into that later on. Yeah, yeah. well, this is it. This is it. I should really do that. I used to have you stickers. Get, download this. What? Listen to this on Podbeam. I'm going to check tomorrow. If you've not listened to it, you get a yellow card and you're off. <laughs> Yeah, no, just like, put it on put it on the site induction, so it's like a compulsory yes! on the site. Yeah, and, and you have to do like, it at home. Into one thing. Yeah, and you have to do yeah. it at home, like the night before. Jesus, yes. and answer Poor. questions about it the day that that morning. Um, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. It's probably all nonsense, but um, it's quite nice to be asked. So it's nice to be yeah. asked anyway. Thank you for asking me to come on here. Chatting well, you're lucky. Well, you're lucky, really, because you're actually a competitor of mine. I don't know if you've noticed this snazzy um, t- T-shirt that I've got <sighs> with an embroidered spark on there. I um, like it. Here we go. It's called Le Spark, um, and it's my my merch. There's links on on the show notes, um, so you can go on there and buy yeah, my definitely check it out. Buy my it's shorts and T-shirt, just jogging shorts and that. It's casual. But, but like informal, you know? Casual informal, I like it. You know. But you'd, have, you'd have to send me your, your Instagram page because I can't find it. Yeah, well, actually, talking what about is it? Read it out loud so we can, we can see shops on. What is it then? Well, no, wait a second. I'm about oh. to introduce this next segment. Oh, sorry, apologies. Yeah, she's you're you're talking just... over me as usual. Well, I've been talking about myself too much and I do that often. It's and, my turn um... now. <laughs> Do you, know, do you know what I mean? Someone has to. Someone has to big me up, and it might as well be myself. Right, so, Liam, now you have a quite successful little clothing brand for um, for site workers, really, like tradesmen yeah. and, and people who work on site. Yeah. It, go on, tell us a little bit about Komodo Workwear. How did it come about? Okay, so um, the company come about... Um, I had the idea of the product when I went to work and I weren't really comfortable in the trousers and then you wear the tracksuit bottoms, you're comfortable, but you haven't got the knee pads. And, you know, I think I was on price at the time. So I just wanted my screws and I just wanted to graft, but I was wearing tracksuit bottoms. And I kept having to like sort it out. So um, I had come up with the idea, the words Komodo um, or Commodore, if there's any uh, foreign listeners, um, in Spanish and Italian means comfortable and that's the concept behind the brand um, oh I like the hoodies uh, obviously the trousers uh, have got a 50-50 cotton fleece design where behind your knee you don't get sort of do you know it'll get loads of piles of creases um, yeah. it's just horrible behind your knee and yeah we're basically just putting an end to that we've got a stretch patch at the rear like I spoke to Sam all the bigger guys when you're Bending down, doing a bit low to the ground. You never rip your trousers. Um, hey, I'm a big guy now. Them. Yeah. Uh, there's there's loads more designs that I've uh, planned out and ordered, and they're on the way. Got new colours coming, and um, yeah, just really want to take it to the next level, really, and compete but, with. Hold on a sec. Hold on a minute. Right. <laughs> so you're sitting, you're there, singing in temporaries, trying to get your make your money in that, and you're like. I know what I need. I need some trousers that are comfortable, but I can't find them. How do you go about like sourcing somewhere to like start making them? Yeah. 
you just gotta put you just gotta put put the work in and start start grafting at it. Anything you want is out there. Do you know what I mean? Any information that you require is literally on the internet. You know, through an app on so you know. There's definitely ways to find anything you want, whether you're looking for clothes, merch, it might be tools, you know, any, anything that pays an interest in. If you put enough energy and effort into it, listen, I got knocked back quite a few times. Do you know what I mean? It weren't like, oh, I just hit someone up and then it all happened overnight and it was really quick. You know, probably how it seems to a lot of people when they see the business, how it take, takes off and sales coming in. It takes a long time to prepare everything. You know, samples take two to three months to come. They might not be correct. You have to redo them, redo them. It's a very patient game and you have to love what you do to continue to be as hungry every single day when you wake up, get to get on your phone, get contacting new people because you can't just sit on one manufacturer. You can't just sit on one sort of idea. You need to be a couple of steps ahead and thinking about, right, summer. I've already, I'm, I'm currently planning my summer outfit um, which is going to be like a breathable trouser, which has never been brought to the market. Um, so stay tuned for that in about two to three months. I want to be releasing a product that's never been released before. And um, hopefully everyone will see that style and everyone wants to be stylish anyway. Everyone wants to be slim fit trousers. No one wants baggy looking horrible and unprofessional anyway. So I'm just going to bring everything to the table. Obviously we provide free knee pads to the people as well. It's just something that I found with my manufacturer that I could do. It just makes sense. Fair. Sounds awesome, man. So do you do your designs yourself? Do you sketch them out or do you like do them? Yeah, so it's very basic, man. I literally just sketch it out. I've got a little A5 book that I just run through. Um, I literally just sketch out designs and uh, just try and put pen to paper I mean it's it's mad because I have all these visions in my head and actually getting that across is the hardest part um especially when you're speaking to manufacturers in different countries as well um it can be difficult to finally get what you want but you just have to as I said just be patient and hopefully they understand what you're trying to you know explain and um yeah just achieve after two or three samples the product that you want and hopefully what the people want so what do you think is um like how where are you now in terms of it being a viable business where you could pack up your tools for a bit? Um I mean it's a good question. I feel like there's a few ways of answering that. I know the best place to jump or the best time to jump is, you know, when it's not really the right time. So you're putting yourself under a bit of pressure. So to go early, I mean, I've probably got a one to two years on the tools where I'd say on the tools and I'd say in one to two years, um, I'll be happy to step away, hopefully, and really push the brand to where I want it to be. Is that going to be a difficult time, though? As in, I, I've said this with YouTube before, a bit different because a lot of people say, oh, when are you going to take over YouTube? When is it going to overtake work? But my YouTube coincides with work i have to go to work to make videos but mm. you, i spoke to a few other youtubers a lot bigger than me that eventually you know jumped ship and did youtube full time yeah and the problem is i enjoy my work that much genuinely i enjoy that whole aspect of it other than paperwork and to jump across and to leave the tools behind and jumping onto something different will be difficult for me is that mm. going to be the same for you or do you think you've done your time with it and you're happy to to start something new um it's a good question. I feel like I definitely vary between the two. I mean, we all have our days. I mean, today's Monday. Everyone here is going to be watching this on a Monday. And uh, I'm sure many of us have had a stressful day. And you just think, oh, you don't want to do this anymore. But, you know, I'll be honest. I do enjoy uh, going to work, um, waking up, do you know what I mean? Going in, I try and read my book on the train. I've got a little routine. I have breakfast before I, I work. And then... I do my graft and I do take pride in it. So you do sort of enjoy it a little bit more. Um, I've always got business cards and I'm talking to people on site. So it's a good way for me to actually market my business as well. Uh, I do think it will be a challenge, but I think I'll definitely be ready because I will never be out of touch with it. I'll be turning up to building sites with like pop-up shops and stuff like that. And that'll be sort of the next step for marketing and like where I'm going to be selling it is not just on my website and for Instagram it's 
uh, it's going to be sort of face-to-face sales and COVID sort of slowed me down with that in, in retrospect as well. Yeah, so it's some tool fairs and whatnot. The thing is that I, what I've learned over the past couple of weeks is when you go to a tool fair, a big one, it's bloody money it costs to get a store. It's a lot of yeah. overheads. Yeah, no, it? it's, it's big, big, big overheads for, for, for like no guarantee. That's the thing as well. You no. need to... Um, and even if you don't sell anything, it's getting the, the brand out there. It's a lot of money just for a couple of buy, people walking by to have a look at the stuff. But yeah, it's, it's what knowing what the next step would be, wouldn't it, really? I mean, you say how, Instagram's a great tool. Like for me, um, workwear designed by workmen, uh, at, well, work people, is so important, man. Because I, mm. I, listen, there's some great brands out there. Let's have it right. There is some great brands and there's some great products out there. I feel like they're not designed by workmen. Like mm-hmm. some of it don't I, make I, sense. I take it next step as well. Obviously, I've worked with quite a few women in the trades, and every single one of them will say, "Not yes, no work clothes like trousers, especially are designed for women. Whether yeah. or not they want it to be a bit tight fitting around the bum and the legs, or they want it a bit looser fitting around the knees, they've all said they end up. Yeah. I see it on Instagram all the time. They buy work trousers and they end up sending it off to someone to resize it and rejig it for them so it's comfy. Yeah. Because it, it it's it's now becoming a bigger thing for women to come in the trade, which is fantastic. But they're ended up wearing men's stuff, which they don't feel comfortable in or don't fit correctly, and then it makes their entire day uncomfortable. But there's a good niche in the market there for for tradie women to get some stuff. Yeah, one hundred percent. Unfortunately, the business isn't as big as I would like it to be right now. And one day when it is, I'll be able to branch out. And I'll definitely be um, supporting the women that are on the tools and, and, and providing them comfortable workwear as well. Obviously, touching on what you said about the women wearing the men's um, trousers, obviously, it's, it's not nice that they're going to have to get things tweaked. But if, if they are, obviously, the most comfortable trousers to wear, obviously, whatever trousers you're going to get is going to be better. So hopefully, any trousers that I provide, if any women want them, and, and get in contact and if any or any women watching, I, I wouldn't mind doing any tweaks myself. You can send me some measurements. I have a tailor in house. So I do that with shorts as well. Um, you That's know, cool. for any short guys that are, you know, they want it above their knee. So they just send me a measurement from their hip to above their knee and I just get my tailor to reduce it down. So because I'm sort of one of the people and as Sam touched on earlier, uh, designed by a tradesman, and that is actually my slogan for the companies, designed for a tradesman by a tradesman so um yeah i mean that is that is definitely women's i think it's so important mate mm. i think it's so important um because listen i'm a fat man and I, i'll wear jogging bottoms a lot and it's so unprofessional all right they're black jogging bottoms they're slim fit but to work yeah man i have to really yeah You're like nice. Obviously, it digs in, and then I drive home, the button hits it underneath of my gut. It's just no good. It's just unacceptable. I know. I need to get onto the Komodos, uh, man. Listen, if I if you done a size that fitted me, I'd buy a pair right now. What size waist do you in? 40. He doesn't want to say. What? 40. Right, so the, the, the grey trousers that we've got on the way, we have a size 40, and we've got two elastic waists. Uh, stretch patches at the side of, of the waist as well. See, that'd be so perfect. In, in a month's time, within a month, and I'll be able to hook you up. Oh, listen, I will have a pair, but I need a pair for Thursday. I got, I need a pair for Thursday, so I've got to go screw fix tomorrow. Order about five pairs, try them on, and send send back four. It's just <laughs> how it is. Talking about like trousers and whatnot, and like people having accidents, Sam. You should. I think it's time you told your story. No, I'm gonna leave that to the end. Oh, okay. Many people won't get to the end, and that's better. Right. So if you all want to hear another poo story, hang oh, around to the end because it I... is. I was you in the... stitches <laughs> earlier. Oh, I was in stitches when he rang me and told me this story. So if you want, it, if you want one of Sam's stories, hang around to the end. 100%. So Liam, what you don't know is sometimes <laughs> things happen, and I've told this story a few times. Told some stories about something that happened in a little car park once, and you know now what was I'm, it? Shit happens. Perhaps, Literally, perhaps. Yeah. But I'm not getting into it again. We're not. We're not covering that. Right. What I want to talk about is testing. No, actually, subject. actually, what I want to talk about is... is you um, sitting still, yeah. No, I can't, man. 
My back's are hurting. Is isolators? Nick don't know what a rotary isolator is because he's domestic yeah, do. spark. It's a domestic spark. Uh, okay. Cool. Um. So rotary isolators. I got. I, I made a rookie mistake today. I was so gutted. I was having a great day, getting everything smashed out. I had to shoot off early. Just about to put the 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 cover on. Well, not the cover. Put the the guts in. Click it in. I put it on upside down. And so the the Working. guts the guts of the isolator won't go in. And then you can't turn it around because then everything's going to be upside down, even the writing. But how annoying is it oh. that the 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 guts that clicks in can't click in up or down? Like it's only one way up. That's so annoying. But well, surely it's designed that way, Sam, so people like yourselves that wire it wrong have to rewire it. Well, that's sure what I'm saying. Man. I didn't wire it wrong. I drilled out the holes wrong and I mounted it wrong. I was like, why have I done this? Because I know about this, right? It's not it's not like I haven't done this before, right? So these, i tell you what, they're the M2 ones from CEF, yeah? They're really nice to use, load of space in them, very easy. I actually really like them. But they, they've got an N and then they've got an N. And I looked at it, I didn't look at it properly. And I thought, oh, well, that, that's, that ends up the right way around. So I'll put it. It wasn't, though, was it? And it's a neutral sound. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, I ended up putting up the isolator up the wrong way around. Um, there must be a reason. It's like you, the, the back of it can't turn around. There must be a reason. I need to know that reason. Can someone leave the reason in the show notes, please? be fair we have the same problem when if we're doing a rotary ice layer for like when hot tubs about, when you do hot it. tubs we well, won't shut up because oh, we do um and the, every single one that i seem to buy all generic sizes and everything there's not enough room in the top of it if you got a six mil or even a 10 mil bending in army there's just no room to loop it in why right. another inch higher <laughs> and lower will be fine that's why you need but to use this extremely m2 tight nick i agree mate they're extremely yeah. tight these M2 ones, they're decent. They just need one. And, listen, if you if you're gonna make it so the one problem I have with the M2, oh, ones sorry, I ain't finished yet. You can mount it upside down. Oh no, because we're not idiots. That's why. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just put a big arrow, big black arrow at the end, up. Like I, I, I could do without that problem. So first thing tomorrow, they'll get delivered. I've got to go back out there, spin it all round, and sort it out. But it's just one of them things that don't need to be a problem. Mm. Mm. Oh, I could just not be a div. That is very true. Um, Nick, yes. what have you actually been up to this week? What have I actually been up to is this, my video had already gone out, but uh, I had a, a month off work with a bad back, which we all know, and I've all cried about it. We had a, blah, 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 Before you mention it, I was back for four days. I had four days back at work, and then I started getting ill, and then I caught COVID. So I've been off for another two weeks, six weeks without earning a penny, Paying my apprentice, paying my unit, my van, my truck, my other half. Everyone's getting paid, except for me. I'm sat home feeling sorry for myself. Coughing, I can't taste anything. I started eating really well and healthy just before. So I've already lost half a stone. I'm doing well. Then I started lost my sense of smell and taste. So all the healthy food became pointless. So I started then eating crap because everything tastes the same. Um, That's the best yeah, time just been to eat healthy. <laughs> It, you would say that, but the amount of effort and preparation I was putting into all these nice meals of cooking, yeah. everything had a massive portion of veg and salad. The difference is you eat veg and salad when you can't taste it. It's even worse. It's just pointless food that doesn't fill you up. So I ended up trying to, to be, I lost my appetite anyway, to be fair. Um, but yeah, so I've been sat at home for a week and a half playing on my PlayStation um, pretty much every day. And um, you're yeah, not doing a great deal. Yeah, I went back to work today crying, for the first time. Crying. He phoned me up I crying. Up. Up. Oh, oh, no, no. When did I speak to you? Was <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so I thought first day back at work, Adam was at college and knocked on the only one job booked in today. I thought, go and knock on it. Didn't answer the door. I was like, wow. Why does this keep happening? So I went to the unit, tidied all that, did a video in there. And uh, yeah, that's all I've been doing. Great fun. Brilliant. So, Loads of money gone. Right, here's a question for you, um, Liam. Do you have the correct set of qualifications to attain a gold card? 
<laughs> I have um, I need to do my 18th but yeah my goal card I mean I do have a goal card but um, yeah I just need to just I haven't done my it. 18th so you're all right yeah what have you not got did you not think I had a goal card what is this and I've got oh. a baby face oh Nick so he's got a goal card I've got a goal card but you haven't I couldn't give a fuck <laughs> about a goal card <laughs> It makes no odds to me. I am a domestic spark. I work by myself. I have my own company. So I don't need a gold card. And the the best thing about it all is no one's telling me what to do. And like you lot will have gold cards. No one tells me what to do. Don't get me wrong. I don't get paid for six weeks being ill at home. But equally, I've not got a guy walking around with a clipboard. What could be Sam (laughs) telling me what to do? So yeah, yeah, I I don't have a gold card. Yeah, Um, it doesn't interest me at all. What about your company? Do you do like? Do you not have to do like um one for like N- NIEC? No one would nape it. So it, we just got. Our, I've got my basic qualifications, which I did uh, three years and three and a half years at college, yeah, and then back of a um, cornflake packet. Yeah, well, nice. And um, yeah, did my on-site assessment, showed them all the stuff, and that was it. Was the way we go. And I've, I've just stayed with them ever since. I've been with them twelve years now. Um, what and they just do it for you? Do what for me? What, like, so you saying who do you get to do, do your testing for when you finish a job? Then, like? no, I do all my own testing, I've got oh, all that right. stuff. Yeah, no, 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 oh, okay, I, I've got yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just um, every year we have a site assessor that comes out, watches oh, okay. us. We have like three jobs, they pick a job, we go and do oh, right, the so testing. That's what they come out and do, they just come out and check, the yeah, work. and just double check everything that it's all up to scratch. Um, but yeah, that's about it, really. I've no interest in going any further with it. I'm happy with the business. If you don't, as need, it is. The, if you don't need the qualifications to do what you do, then no, I, I understand. There's some people that are same boat as me that want to get a few more qualifications just to do a bit further learning and mm. have another tick on the sheet. But I am not bothered in the slightest. I'm really happy with the way things are going. I've got an apprentice. Maybe next year I'll employ someone else and grow the business. A little bit bigger but as it stands i'm just i'm happy with the workload how it all goes and nice. i finally got to a place now where it's it's almost self-sufficient with me turning up just to go to the job when my other half tells me where to go so it's pretty nice. good it's, it's it's still stressful getting work in and everything like that but things have become a lot easier but i couldn't be like like jordan where he employs was it six people now the, the, that would scare the hell out of me thinking how much work you've got to get in and paperwork and Sorry, Sam. Liam, right there, mate. Jordan is um, someone called Jordan um, Artisan. Artisan Electrical. Yeah. He's another YouTuber, um, much bigger than Nick. Like, basically, Nick wishes he was Jordan, but he's not. Um, and, yeah, it's just... J- Jordan is probably... Well, he's he's the king in waiting. And Nick's what, more like... He finished it, Sam. What? Sure. what? Sam, it's been a while since I've Waiting for your reaction off me. Before I forget as well, um, Sam, I bumped into Gaz when I went to e- uh, Elex the other day and Efix, and Efix have hit over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. So well done, yes, guys. they have. Actually, well, currently on 122,000 subscribers. Yeah, something like 100. Do you know why that happened? I'll tell you why that happened. Yes, I'll been... tell you why that happened quickly. So YouTube you can do shorts on, and their recent short that was released two weeks ago has 42 million views. That's mental. I don't even know how that's possible. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. their channel blew up. Gary... Well done, um, guys. Well done, Gary. And Gary John. is, quite frankly, um, a bit of a genius. I don't know if you know, he does a... He started out life doing... Uh, as a spark then he turned into a lecturer because he hurt his back and then he'd done lecturing for 20 years and he, he was the best lecturer. channel yeah the best lecturer started up a uh, youtube channel um just putting all these lessons online and stuff that's now massive as well bigger than it and um he just does loads of stuff for apprentices um and then he got he fell in with the right guys. They decided to do eFix, which is like top gear for electricians, and it's mm. blown up in a year. Very well done. It's like three I'll times the size of Nick. Yeah, to check your stuff out as well, Nick. No, thanks nah, don't worry about, about it. Just watch my. You stuff. You won't be interested. Better. Mine's mine's domestic stuff. It's fine. Yeah, mine's better. Um, it's a new channel, so it's a little bit smaller. 
A little bit. What are you? How many subs are you on, Sam? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm just six. checking now. Don't, don't say six. One thousand and fourteen. Oh. Okay. Wow. You're no, one thousand one hundred and forty. Sorry. About to be one thousand one hundred and twenty-nine. <laughs> but yeah so, oh, just pressed on it oh, but yeah God. I'm basically um, the most the, the, the up and coming guy um, says who? <laughs> no one <laughs> not one person says that ever um, but what is most of your work? are you mostly commercial industrial now? For myself um I've done a lot of work recently in F45 gyms. Oh, okay. Oh, so yeah, so like, like, so commercial stuff, putting up lights. Yeah, and... yeah, sort of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's mainly commercial. I mean, it's all like metal, metal tray and that, and then we we chewed down for the uh, for the sockets and the um, BT and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yes, it's what's nice. F, what's they're, they're F45? nice jobs to be fair because it's just a complete empty unit, and you just go in there and you just, you know what I mean, they've got future lights. Do you know what I mean? It's all the same. It's it's nice fit out to be honest. Oh, they're like a sort. Of, they're like um a gym. Yeah. They're a no, franchise. A gym, yeah. So yeah, basically, franchise you can gym. buy the uh, the. You can buy anyone can basically go and buy an F45. Pretty much, you just buy the plot and you buy the kit, and then you. Sort of go to their regulations, uh, so to speak. Right. It's like CrossFit, of... but no. yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, similar. But um, so if you're going to be like this big, on listen, you've got the hair like Donald Trump. You're going to be <laughs> the next Donald Trump guy in the clothing world. Yeah, like, do you think you're miss sparking? Um, no, I don't think I'm miss sparking. I mean, no. I do. Have, I do have a passion for the work where. Um, I do really want to solve issues and I have a big problem with the fact what you said earlier about people not designing things that, that who are meant for uh, so like tradesmen need to design like the, the work where for example and like even lights I have such an issue with lights I just feel like I, I put a light out and I just feel like what office board has designed this because it's just <laughs> I don't um, think I've like, ever yeah. found a light that I think, well, that's a good design. No, there's been like one or two you put up and go like, I went out proper smooth, like, do you know what I mean? But it's um, very rare, like. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, because I was on a job not so long ago putting up wall lights, and I was like, who invented these wall lights? <laughs> like, you literally had to take a bit of the wall out to get mm. and they're not even rear entry they were just like take a bit of wall out to get around it no yeah, we have that with the porcelain um half dish lights that sit on the wall that you can paint there's no room for any cable no at all it's just mental and I, I do it does make you wonder it's more like form over function though isn't it yeah it's all money it's how cheap they can make it though i think surely no one probably no one in the warehouse probably thinks you know what let me just well, all right, a couple of cables into this to see how practical it, no, of course it they don't. is. No one cares that much. They the don't. designer they knocks it up, it. then they turn Even it Even the up. LEDs, like, you get these round, in them gyms, and, like, get these round fittings with, like, uh, just, like, literally just a strip of LED around, do you know what I mean? And they're welded on, and they just pull off. Like, you you breathe on it, and it just, the weld just falls off, and you just, like... That's, that is a... Uh... That is a that is a problem. What do you think we're going to be seeing then? A uh, Komodo lighting? <laughs> Komodo lighting? No, do you know I'll, I'll um you know I've, I have got you know many ideas and many different things. Like I, I had an idea a couple of years ago about um a battery. So basically, one day I think I run out of um I've got my Makita tools and I have a Makita battery run out and the keys I was working with had to walk. And um, I just thought, what about an adapter? Do you know what I mean, usually they're all all the drills are like 18 volts, and you know the ampage doesn't really matter because as long as it's 18 volts, 18 volts. So I got in contact with China, and I, I got quite quite far down the process of designing this adapter. And when I got to like sort of final stages, they said to me, "Yeah, do you know what? We can't do it." Blah blah blah. Anyway, a year later, it's now on Amazon. So shout out to the guys who've ever done that. I don't know <laughs> yeah, if it was me one. and the company that actually um, that I was speaking to have actually gone out and done it. I don't actually know, but I was really far down the line. I'd never heard of it before. I had thought of it, 
Um, and yeah, they said they couldn't do it. I knew they could, but, and then there was nothing I could do. I just I let it go. And six months later, I had the um, the work web idea anyway, which I thought was a better one and uh, more more sustainable and for the long run. But it just goes to show. If you've got ideas, you know, just because one doesn't work or one fails, um, the next thing is going to come or something might pop up. See, I think that's awesome, man. So you had a go at that. I mean, I'm not being funny, but I ain't never going to use a Makita battery on my DeWalt. It's just not ever going to happen. Like, I will be physically Listen, sick. if it's a Friday afternoon, Sam, and, no. and you need it, no. then it's happening. Do you get what no. I'm saying? Like, even, even the fact you can get them DeWalt's, they're like 10-amp they're like batteries. Could I have that on my little impact? Fuck. Listen, let me tell you, there's one thing I can't, cannot stand is the mixing of brands. Yeah, I'll right. never, you'll never catch me with Adidas and Nike, but I do not care if I've got a Makita battery in my... No, in my see, I, I call that heresy. Sight <laughs> heresy. Like, <laughs> listen, you'd be burned at the stake for that. No. I'll be getting you, yellow cards if I was on your side, innit? Listen, you'd be off. I'd be like, listen, <laughs> mate, don't bring that heresy round here. See you later. Um, I love it. No, you can't... Listen, I hate them people who... Have, oh, I've got the, the Milwaukee pack out, and they've got... Dewalt in it. I'm like, why would you do that? Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I, agree. I can't have yeah, that. I I'm, I am with that. I'm just you got to go with one. Unfortunately for me, I've gone with Makita, but yeah. Oh, oh, that's a yeah. dead. We're in the podcast man. now, Sam. Sure. God. Unless they want to sponsor us in here, they're the best. But, um, <laughs> but that's a dead Shut brand. That, that's a fuddy duddy brand. Um, yeah, that's a poor one, man. So the annoying thing is that you, you build a collection up and you've got a couple of them. It's so difficult to pull away and start so fresh difficult. with someone else. You can't you can't pull away. I mean, what my idea was, I thought, well, if I buy a shit brand that breaks in like a year or two years, then I know that I have to come off the tools and grow the business. So if I oh, thought, yeah, if I get them yeah, all yeah. Day, I like it. Like, they'll be Saved it. Me too long, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, I've had that. I mean, my multi will blow up after six months. So um, it's just one of them ones. I am. Um, I really want to go to Milwaukee. Like their stuff's pretty cool, um, and their pack out stuff's is. expensive, isn't it? Yeah, but it's so much better, isn't it? It's so much better, especially than Bosch. And Mil- <sighs> so Nick sponsored. You got by Bosch? Bosch. Who's, who's... Uh, I'm sponsored by Bosch. He so... gets it all free. <laughs> but um. No, I like. I've got my. I've got my Dewalt stuff. Sam it's, had a go with my Bosch stuff, and he said it was epic. And it's so much better. It's not even yeah. close. <laughs> my my dead impact. But I bet, I bet Nick, you, I bet you get the top stuff as well. Like I get like the. Do you know what I mean? I'll buy like the, the, the third, like the cheapest drill out of like three combi drills. Like you just get the cheapest one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they just yeah. It's got about got, ten drills. Oh yeah, we got about out hammers to the. To they the sent me the drill. the massive. So you got the the normal SDSs, the SDS Plus, which yeah. are, the new ones are big drills anyway, aren't they, Sam? The rear loading battery, and then they sent me an SDX Max, SDS Max, and it's like this. And I'm not even lying; it's like this big. <laughs> it takes a 12 amp battery that slides in the center of it to counterbalance the weight. And I I tried to use it. I mean, I've got a drill bit lying around here somewhere. They are enormous because they're the max ones. I used it once. Is it the same like, size head? No, no, it's a, no. The, the max have got bigger, um, bigger ends. Oh to yeah, no, no, I know the ones that you're on about. Yeah, and uh, I drilled a hole in the wall, and the house nearly come down. I was like, I cannot. It was great for someone on site, perfect for a house basher. I was like, so I just took it. I was like, this is amazing, and then just put it in my my big industrial unit, and it's just it's sat there ever since. In his um, big industrial unit. Mm, where's yours, Sam? Um, but yeah, no, they send a lot of the stuff because obviously with the promotions of just getting it views on the on YouTube and everything, they send yeah. me all the newer stuff and every now and then I just say, Oh, I, I fancy you'd go at this, and they'll just send me some stuff through. So it's it's really yeah, nice. Man, it is cool. They say Bosch don't pay me, it's just a product thing. Um, I'm happy, and then every now and then when we got a duplicate, Adam, my I all half of my stuff goes to my apprentice anyway. Of if we course. have any duplications or stuff that I, they'll give me and I don't really... To be fair, I should give away the massive SDS because I don't use it. But just do giveaways on YouTube and Instagram and let someone else... Who it will basically use it, hasn't bought a tool for about two years since he met me. Oh, oh, bad way grip. to live. Get a career. Well, I thought about bare times. Are you, are you much of a tool chaser yourself, Sam? No, mate. Uh, couldn't care, care less. 
Couldn't care less. They are a... Well, they're a means to, Sam sees them as a means to an end, and if something would cost £5 or £20, he'll go no. for the £5 one. No, that's I'm incorrect. I've £1 spirit level for about three years. Yeah, and everything was pissed. Sam walks Never. around the Audi, Never. Um, the power aisle and Audi, and gets all the bargains. No, in fact... Don't. No, no, you've told me this before. You've just got a pack uh, of screwdrivers listen, for six quid. There's no, there's no way I'm coming on in. Everyone's slagging off the middle aisle of Audi. Yeah? Oh no, I love it. That don't. goes off on a Sunday when you pop down to Audi, and you think, "Cool, I could spend the one around here and treat myself to a few." Look what I bought the other day. Soldering. Oh, Soldering. Nice. I could have done that on the F45 yeah. the other day. Seven pound. My my biggest thing, the first time I ever went to Audi, being with her for like our food shop, and I've got three kids, our food shopping per week could be on the upwards of 240 quid. It's ridiculous, right? So we thought we'd start going Audi. So the first time ever, I thought, let's go in there, let's walk around. I spent more money there because I ended up walking past the brand yeah. new Dyson in the power aisle. I thought, that's, that's a good price. We bought that out. And I walked out thinking, for fuck's sake, I've spent more here. I wouldn't have bought that at Tesco. Mate, I, if she goes... If she goes, uh, oh, we're going, oh, we've got to go shopping today. You come in. I'm like, where are you going shopping, though? And she's like, yeah, you're where are the toilets? I'm, like, I'm yeah. coming. I'm coming. But look, I bought that as well. Did you want to Why wouldn't you want one of them? £7.99. Look. I want Where did you get it from, Sam? Lidl. Audi. Oh, Lidl. Lidl. That one's from Lidl. Right, listen, I don't care. I like that stuff. Yeah, the stuff you only use once or twice is banging. But I couldn't, like, use a screwdriver set from there. I have done. It lasted yeah, me about have. a week before I broke yeah. every end. The boss have screwdrivers? No. No. Nick gets these weird... No, what, what, once you... He's, he's, he got sponsored by this weird little like company called Tool Maniac. And they sort of... They have everything Nipex and everything... Um, Vera. Vera, whatever you call it. Mate, and he got all these tools for free. Liberties. Jealousy, that's what it is. Yeah, I'm I was fully jealous. But mm. listen, like I say, I don't really I don't really care about tools. I'm not like I'm not like all precious about them, you know. Have you I got don't... a veto pack? Uh, no, no, we got velocity. velocity. But I don't buy it. Um I'm friends with the guys there. <laughs> and, uh, it's just text me, you know. It's competition, this, yeah. isn't it? Oh, it's get it's there's no it. competition, don't worry. One of those oh, there is <laughs> It's starting fire coming out. No, to be honest with you, um, they message me and say, Nick, can we send you this? Sam messages them saying, can I have this? That's the difference. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you don't ask, you don't get Sam, mate. That's no, very bro. true. Um, no, to be honest with you, um, I'm not really bothered about all that stuff. I don't really take any more freebies anymore. Um, I'm just not interested. It doesn't bother me. It, In fact... And I stopped taking stuff because I don't really need anything. I've got my tools. I'm all set. Yeah, I know and what then, you mean. I get a bit then, obsessive until I've got everything I need. Yeah, that's it. And then I was doing giveaways ages and ages ago, and that was costing me so much money sending out giveaways and stickers. I mean, people love stickers. And then, mm. and before I knew it, I spent. I sent. I think I sent out like thirty in a week, and I was like. Not doing that no more. Stamps. Oh, my God. Yeah. Stamps cost so... I stopped doing it. I ended up... I put it on Instagram the first time I ever got a batch done. I ordered about 400 stickers, which cost quite a bit of money anyway. I put it on Instagram saying, drop me your message and everything. I had about 300 people within an hour go, can I have one? I was like, why have I done this? Why have I done this? Yeah. And didn't then, think how much stamps cost. And it's not just that. It's a stamp in an envelope. Uh, and then you've got the to do address them all. That's one. time. Dress on each one. Oh, drop me out. I no. even tried to palm it off on Amanda, and I'm not talking. I'm not talking like we've got, like I have got the same amount of followers as you. But for the for the followers I do have, and it's for the so people who effort. do want them, it's still too much. Can't be bothered. Like, and honestly, this is why, yeah, Jordan and and Chris used to they they end up selling there. So if you want one of their stickers, you have to buy it through the shop because <laughs> otherwise you would just spend hours and hours and hours. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's, doing it, and, and I get it because people have invested in you and they want one of your stickers and that. Listen, come and get one. <laughs> Listen, I'll, I'll give you 10. Come and pick them up. Like, I there is, there is something I've, that I've got an idea for um, that maybe us three could try and put together somehow or um, somehow do. Um, so, do you know, like, sort of an event for, for, for electricians and basically just sort of bringing people together would be the idea. Um, and then you said, come and pick one up. Well, 
you know, just potentially having a day of like sort of small little fun games, whether it be sort of predicting the centre without a tape measure or just some uh, quick and easy fun thing I'd win for that. electricians to come and get together, I'd, basically. I'd beat Nick at everything. Yeah. I've thought about this last year. I did a mental health video a couple of years ago. And uh, I said on that, I would like to do just a, a big meet up somewhere yeah. sort of close enough for everyone to come to, or some guys, if they say, but you've just, there's so many things we have to think about. Like I would say, Oh, we can go for a, for a drink afterwards, but nowhere in this world, in the country, are we going to get, let's say 400 people turn up. Are we going to get 400 people into a bar or split yeah. up? And, and the, the organization behind it would be massive, but I've, I've wanted to do something for ages. And, and I mean, the event needs charity. to be big enough to hold, <laughs> beers and stuff there do you know what i mean it needs yeah like if you, but then if you're, you're done about licensing about it, we can make a yeah. separate chat and we can go down the line because i do see benefits whether it being more in the long run than the short run i'm not necessarily worried about how much it's going to no. cost or whether you're going to earn returns it's more about bringing people together getting a community i mean that's why i call a business komodo community because i want to feel with everyone together i want to make electricians and like you know it's all all tradesmen be like a unit do you know what i mean so it wouldn't even be electricians you could have like electricians versus plumbers and then imagine the chaos of what it's going I'd to win be that. especially it's disgusting I'd fun win that. games do you know what i mean so could definitely look at it's a good shout like that. there is it is there is a lot to think about though i do appreciate that but, yeah um, I'll, I'll be i'll tell you now i'm too lazy i'm out um, <laughs> Two guys are better than one. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes you can't do something. You need to team up with a few people and bring your bit. Mate, there's always room for stuff like that, um, especially now on the other side of COVID. I'd love to do like a proper little event, but to be honest with you, since I've had a kid, I honestly, I no time. I don't know where it's gone. I don't know what every minute of my day well. just. I oh, listen. It does. But people used to go, say to you, "Oh, when you get old." Um, before you know it, you're 50. Well, guess what? Before I knew it, I'm nearly 40. And I'm like, what is going on here? How like, how am I aging this quick? Listen, fat don't crack, so I'm still handsome and fat. But it's just like, so what's these faces about? No, nothing. No, no. We oh, just you don't nearly 40, though. So that's good, Sam. How old are you, Liam? I'm 25. 94 oh, years old. Yeah. Just got good genetics. Oh, I'm not. Oh, I'm, I'm not the youngest. No, mate. You're, listen, I told you, you're too old to wear a Batman hat. And listen, them boyish, <laughs> them boyish looks are gone, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're going. I know that. It's, it's How old happens. are you, Nick? Twenty nine. Oh, come on. So no, what, you don't want to be the youngest anymore. Is that what it is? No, I've always prided myself on, like, especially with the whole YouTube thing. I was the youngest by far. Um, the the guys I ever worked on site or the spark around yeah. my area, I was the youngest spark doing it. I was the youngest one with the apprentice. And in the past five years, out of nowhere, like, all these other younger lads have just come up and cropped up and they're, like, smashing it. And I'm just like, well, I had the youngest thing going for me. That's now gone. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, 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 it's good because... I started being a spark and self-employed straight from college at 18. And I've always really like now saying to the lads, don't do it. It's so much hassle when you first pass college. I'd love to see them installs. I'd love to see them installs. They've all, they... I've always been a good spark. It's just the, it was the stuff behind running the business that I struggled with. Mm. Um, but you, I, if I could go back in time, behind. yeah, we should go back in time and tell myself, you know, Work for someone for another two, three years. When you're 21, then look at it, maybe. Um, and so you're saying you made the jump a little bit early. Yeah, it, it was it was a jump more. It was more of a push than a jump. I, I, I uh, subbed for a company while I was working at, well at college, learning. And as the contract came to an end, they said they offered me a job um, to go to Liverpool or Manchester or something to do another uh, commercial building. And I just said, no, I can't be arsed. Like, I've just become qualified at college. I was already self-employed to work for them. So I just bought a van and then just went on my own. And yeah. I, I did enjoy it, but I, there was no drive for me to build it or to earn money. It was just a means to an end to start with. And I just sort of drifted. For the first two years of doing it, I just drifted through it to the point where then I was like, actually, no, this can help me out. My main thing was my dad kept, my dad was a painter. He kept saying to me, you should be earning way more than me. You're a spark. You should be earning way more. And he kept saying it. And I was like, to the point where it's like pissed me off. I was like, 
shut up. Like, I don't, like, what do you want from me? And then when it sort of clicked one day, I was like, I've got the potential to win a lot more than he has. And, um, yeah, just put my finger out my ass and just started working properly. Mm. It's and an age thing sense. as well, though. Yeah, it's maturity as well. Mentality. It really is. Um, so, oh, sorry, yeah, but... Well, fuck you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> he always does this. Such a, if he was here, I'm going to punch him in his little fat face. <laughs> Ooh, it's annoying me, that is. He does this every time. Like, I try not to, to react. But tonight, if he was here, just slap his silly face and watch him wobble. A little sorry, sorry to say that, Liam. Yeah. <laughs> it isn't. It's, you know, triggers going across the screen there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> That's made yeah, me it so happy. Um, listen, man. Um, Liam, it's been awesome having you on. Monday Club. That's the story. Well, thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> Cheers, dude. Check thanks, out both man. your stuff a little bit more. Check out your stuff more as well, Nick. Thanks, mate. Yeah, I'll have a look. Yeah, I'll have a the, uh... Just before I go, anyone watching, I've added a discount code Monday Club to <gasps> the website. So if anyone needs any gear, get onto Monday Club in a discount when you check out and we'll ship it out straight away. Thanks, guys. I oh, will put good. that in the show notes. Um, Nick might even throw it out on his on his show notes. Monday Club, we're out.